Tonight, some of our hottest young acting talents, including stars from the new Black Panther film. There's going to be fireworks. Let's start the show! <laughs> Show. We've got a great show for you tonight. I tell you, I couldn't be more excited if I was a maggot about to crawl into Matt Hancock's ear. <laughs> yep, the former health secretary is about to appear on this year's I'm a Celebrity. <gasps> there he is, arriving in Australia. Do you think, has Hancock forgotten he's got a job as an MP? <laughs> I mean, I suppose it's possible. I mean, for months he had forgotten he was married. <laughs> It's been reported he's getting 400 grand for doing the show. I know. I mean, that's even more money than his mate in the pub got for that dodgy PPE contract, isn't it? <laughs> it is. This, this here is the, the endless jungle that Matt Hancock will be staying in. Oh, dense and incredibly thick. Just two of the things producers have called him. <laughs> Personally, I think I speak for the nation when I say Matt Hancock should be given the sack. And when he's finished eating that, the testicles and penis. <laughs> hey, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we have music from British rap star Loyal Garner. Yeah! And we'll be joined by two of the stars of the new Black Panther film, Wakanda Forever, Winston Duke and Michaela Cole! director and author who's now written the book of that no one wanted to read. He's not the first. It's Richard Hyamati! Hello, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, no, 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 no. see you. Since their breakthrough performance as Princess Diana in The Crown, this actor has been one of the UK's hottest rising talents. Now starring in Lady Chatterley's Lover, it's Emma Corrin! <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> and he won an Emmy nomination and a BAFTA for his performance as Connell in the hit drama Normal People. Now starring in the critically acclaimed After Sun, it's Paul Meskel! Welcome all, lovely to see you all. Yeah, suited and booted, it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was saying we kind of look like we're about to do our first day of secondary school. Yep. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm the supply teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as fun as I look. <laughs> <laughs> Emma Corrin, though, you have become this sort of fashion icon. You, you're like, what do you have? I mean, you know, we've got a picture. Uh, this is, it's like, it's a goldfish in a bag, but yeah, then if yeah. you look, probably on telly you can't see this. There are there's eyes. A, there's a face in there. But I didn't see that until oh, I looked at yes. a picture of it. I didn't know that when I was wearing it. And, I mean, is it clever that it looks like a plastic bag tied to your shoulder, or is it a plastic bag tied to your shoulder? Arguably both. <laughs> I don't know. Is the face a cat? No, so I... Th <laughs> so a lot of... Big eye, eye, nose, A lot there. of people have said Dora... No, not Dora, that's oh. the Explorer. What's the, um... <laughs> oh, the uh, one from Nemo. It's funny, cos she has no Dora. memory. <laughs> Dora. Okay. No, that's the fish. Who is it, Dora? Dora. The girl who looks... Dory! Like... Dory! No, that's the no, fish. No, Dory is the one I'm Dory's thinking Dory's the of. fish. <laughs> Dory's <laughs> the fish. There's one, the girl who looks... Dara! <laughs> Dara, oh, no. Dara, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, so, with a dress like that, do they, they bring it to you? And yeah. go, we've got this idea, you're going to wear a goldfish in a bag. Yeah. Off you go. Or do, do you sometimes got to go, not sure I'm going with the goldfish in a bag? No, I actually sort of love the weirder, the better. 
Is it, is it like a challenge? Is it like a, a dare? Bit. There's let's sort of like a bit of one-upmanship. Let's, let's see yeah. if we can make them say no. Yeah. <laughs> kind of always, we're always striving for an article in the Daily Mail that really doesn't get it. <laughs> it's kind of what we're always, yeah. All articles in the Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like epically confused by whatever I'm wearing. It's quite fun. And uh, weirdly, not weirdly, I'd just say it, Paul Meskel, also a fashion icon. Um, well, you are. Am I? Yes. I, I mean, is. thanks yeah. to normal people. Uh, those shorts, the O'Neill uh, shorts, yes. come on. Okay. Uh, Different they, kind of. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Uh, now that's that, that's them in the wild. Yes. Um, but then they they I mean they did become like you changed O'Neill's fortunes. Yes. And I love this idea. So uh, Paul very kindly signed a pair of the shorts uh, to raise money for the local GA club, mm -hmm. and they were put into a raffle. And I think we've got a picture of the man with the winning tickets. There he is. <laughs> That's uh, Noel Ryan. His yes. name is. Yeah. Wow. Can I ask a question? Please. Were they already framed? Uh, or did he choose no, to I, frame them? No, they. <laughs> they good question. That's a great question. <laughs> and also, what size are they? <laughs> they're 34. And no, also, they're not. They are. They're no. just. Pressed against the glass. Has he worn that them? man's very I small. I haven't worn them. You haven't worn them. No, no, no. That man's very small. He's like here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. That's Noel Ryan. Um, apparently, because obviously when he won, then all the papers came, and he claimed he'd never seen. No, this is where my this is Curra Clare GA Club, where my dad is from. So Noel knows my granny. <laughs> he told my granny I've never seen the show, but it, it's, it's up on his wall now. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what was second prize? <laughs> Probably better than the shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, Richard, is there anyone on the couch you'd like to apologise to? No. <laughs> Are you Apart sure? Apart from maybe myself. <laughs> for being too hard on myself sometimes. <laughs> Actually, weirdly, because in uh, there was a lockdown BAFTA awards, and normally the BAFTA awards are in, uh, you know, some big theatre, yeah. but in the lockdown they were in this studio, weren't they? Yes. Um, once no one could come, they felt it was safe to ask me to host. <laughs> Um, yes, I th it was here. Um, you know, I killed the atmosphere a bit more than you. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, it was here. Well, we've, we've got a clip. Uh, this is the end of the winner for Best Actor, Paul Maskell. Uh, here he is uh, finishing his speech. I'm probably forgetting people and I'm incredibly nervous. So, um, uh, my mum and dad at home, I love you. Uh, so, thank you. I don't know what else to say. What an absolute bastard. <laughs> yeah, I stand by that. Your entire energy was toxic. Uh, <laughs> I do remember leaving and just being like, Richard Iowati just called me yeah, bastard. <laughs> Actually, Michaela Cole's coming on later. Yeah. You, you met her at the... I met her. She gave a beautifully eloquent speech and had clearly seen my shambles of a speech <laughs> and was like, next time you should write a speech. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah. Lesson learned. Lesson, Lesson learned, yeah. exactly. Uh, let, let's start with our first film tonight. Paul Meskel brings us After Sun. Uh, it's in cinemas from the 18th of November. So this is Charlotte Wells, uh, Scottish director. It's our debut yeah. film. Uh, so who do you play? How do you describe the film? I play a character called Callum, Sophie's uh, dad. He's a young man, just recently turned 30. But it's basically a film about uh, Sophie and Callum on holidays in Turkey. And as the film progresses, you start to understand that maybe there's something going on beneath the surface with him in terms of his mental health. And it's also kind of uh, Sophie's reflection on her relationship with her father as well. Yeah, because you keep seeing little flashes of her in the future. Exactly, yeah. 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 And, and is it Charlotte Wells's? Is it her life or is it not her life? Charlotte always puts it as it, like it's an autobiographical work of fiction, which is the line I've been using. Okay, um, very good. <laughs> it's, uh, no, but it, it, work of fiction. It's a good line. It gets me out of a lot of yeah. trouble with it. <laughs> sort of true. I yeah, think that's what it yeah, means. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sort of true. Sort of true. But, uh, sort of true, but yeah. don't shoot me if it's not. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, we've got a little clip. This is you as Callum uh, showing Sophie, uh, your daughter, uh, some of your dad dancing. Yes. Oh. 
Last night, time for a dance? I don't dance. Sophie. I never, ever dance. Okay, I'm dancing with or without you. I told you, I love to dance. Which is embarrassing. Very good. Oh. And so, Paul, are you a are you a natural mover? Do I'm you... a natural dad dancer. <laughs> um... <laughs> um, now, Richard, you go clubbing, don't you? Well, look. <laughs> This is a rare night off for me. <laughs> um, no, I've never been to a club. Really? Never? There wasn't even a gasp from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a gasp. The audience just, as one went, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, of course, why would I go to a club? I have records at home. <laughs> Fair enough. Do you dance to them at home? I uh, put them on. Mm -hmm. and I make sure they're not scratched. <laughs> so I, I just watch that record yeah, while it's yeah. spinning. <laughs> I, record dances, yeah, in a I'm way. I'm basically like a lifeguard. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, dancing? No. No. They don't believe you. No, <laughs> see, <laughs> we've got this clip. No. I, I, <laughs> oh, I think they do I have this clip. Yeah. <laughs> you just said no, Pretty willing sure it away. Pretty sure we do. <laughs> uh, no, this is you and I presume it's your brother, and you're doing a fabulous performance of Viva La Vida, a oh, Coldplay yes. song. Uh, and the two of you loving your performance. I feel, and see if you can spot this, I feel someone in the house maybe isn't enjoying the performance as much as you and your brother. Here we go. You've got the moves and everything. Oh, <laughs> Cut to your father with like a cigarette at this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, was that a fire alarm or did the neighbours break in? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it was a smoke alarm. A smoke alarm. Mm, smoke alarm. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, the real star of this is actually here. Yeah, Where's, yeah. Hey. Where's your brother? <laughs> oh, there he is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's all grown up. Yeah. What's his name? Donkey. John C. John C. Yeah, yeah. We all have the same face. It's, um, <laughs> yeah. it's like genetics gone mad. And is, that, is that your mom? <laughs> That's my mum. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hello. 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 <laughs> Lovely to see you. I love to see you. Uh, now, I, I feel bad talking about you because you're right there. But this is a weird thing. So your mother, I mean, you played Princess Diana because yeah. you look like Diana. But your mother, even more. Looks like Diane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to recast the crown? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil it for you, Richard. <laughs> I, this is I heard it's a fictional autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> Anything possible. Yeah. Uh, but, no, but to the point where mm. it was kind of a sensation when Diana was at the height of her fame. Yeah, so um, when... Um, I thought, yeah, it's weird that you're here, but I'm telling a story. But um, <laughs> so when Diana passed away, the, the next day, my mum was um, commuting to work. And f f let me know if I'm telling this wrong. Um, <laughs> she was commuting to work and she was in Cannon Street Station. Yeah, yes. Cannon Street Station <laughs> at a sort of pub cafe. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and, and um, yeah, someone, um, a guy walked in and he sort of f passed out because he thought that she was um, Princess Diana. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. seriously, somebody fainted. <laughs> nearly fainted. I said I would exaggerate and say that he fainted, but apparently he was he nearly fainted, according to Mum. He just got a, a knee wobble when he. <laughs> 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 it was probably the beer. <laughs> yes, it it usually is. Is. Yeah. I'd love to see you. Uh, it's rare we have family members from clips in the audience. <laughs> I, 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 I wish I could take credit and say we'd produce this item brilliantly, but no, Emma brought them. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, talking of uh, parents, Richard, you grew up in Ipswich? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, but now, <laughs> but your, but your, your parents, yes. how, how, how did they meet? Because it, it seems unlikely they would have met. Well, my mum was Norwegian, my dad was Nigerian. My dad fixed TVs, and in a scenario that 
sounds dodgy. He fit my mum's TV. <laughs> now, yeah. there, there wasn't funk music played. <laughs> It's a legitimate call out, and they connected, um, and he connected the TV. So that's that's how they uh, they met. And but do they meet in Ipswich or do they move? There? Oh, no one meets in Ipswich. Okay. <laughs> so they were both in London. Thanks for reminding me of my biography because I drifted. <laughs> um, I, um, they met in London. They both lived in London. Um, and yet I've chose. Got to work on this story. They chose to go to Ipswich. They well. Again, do we choose it? Which or does it? Which <laughs> um, they um, they left London um, uh, just because they wanted to move somewhere a bit more exciting. <laughs> of course, and, and they and also just for the cultural opportunity. <laughs> and, and Paul, did you base this character in After Sun on your dad? Not directly, but probably like I don't have anyone else to really base <laughs> my dad off other than, or a dad off other than my dad really. So. He's probably in there. Yeah, somewhere. and and did he get you into acting? Is that the story? Well, my dad used to do a bit of. He's he's a school teacher, but act used to act as well when I was growing up. And I remember when I was about seven or eight, he was like, "I'm doing this play." It was a play called Jeffrey Bernard is Unwell. Oh yeah. And it was an excuse. I always found like going to the theatre in the cinema when I was young as an excuse to get chips and like <laughs> nice food and <Yeah>. soft drinks. <laughs> so I went along, and I was bitterly disappointed that he wasn't in. The play, it was like a one-man play with like loads of crazy costumes, and I only realised towards the very end of the play that he was like wearing like fake beards and eyes and yeah. <laughs> so uh, now either your father's a brilliant actor thick, or you yeah. were a bit thick. No, <laughs> <laughs> I was just focusing on the Maltesers. I was like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> no sign of dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was really thick. <laughs> uh, and now, where did the music come from? Oh, um, where did the music come from? Pro well, my mum and dad actually met on stage doing Pirates of Penzance. Hello! So, wow. Yeah, yeah, probably there, but my mum's not a great singer. My dad, my mum was one of the maids and my dad was the Pirate King. Oh, so, okay. Hell uh, yeah. Here I am. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I say that because you are a great singer and, and we've heard you sing and now there's this Clip that it has been out in the world. How is it out in the world? Did the school release it or something? Yeah. So uh, this is a school production of Phantom of the Opera. The Whoa. first ever amateur production in You're Ireland. The Phantom. I was the Phantom. Stop. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Now, yeah. remember, this is a school production. I don't know what school you went to, <laughs> but uh, the production values, I, I think, are quite high. I think probably people yeah. have seen professional productions. Sure. <laughs> Not as good. So this is Paul Meskell. As, oh, oh, now, do you remember the name of the lady? Who... Uh, Jessica Hackett. Jessica Hackett. I, it was on the tip of my tongue. Uh, <laughs> I knew I knew her. Uh, it's Paul Mescal and Jessica Hackett in Phantom of the Opera. Enjoy. Look at this. Come on. Look at this. Is that real fire? No, it's a, a like a... Oh, like a screen. Look at that mask. I'm guessing that's a wig. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I hope she doesn't faint. She might faint. I hope she doesn't faint. <laughs> Look how long my hands are. <laughs> You're both feeling oh, it. Yeah. Oh, no. oh no, I think she's getting a bit faint. She might go. She's got. Uh, uh, oh! <laughs> it's, it's very good! <laughs> but, but I was watching. So, famously, Phantom of the Opera, at the end of Act One, a chandelier comes crashing down to the stage. That's what it's supposed to come, cra like, swooping in. Yeah. Big dramatic moment. Yeah. But that's where the production values, we'd use them all on the, like, candles, clearly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we did have a kind of ramshackle... I'll tell you what, I fast-forwarded. Oh. Uh, here <laughs> is... Uh... <laughs> So talk us through this. So you went for slow motion. Well, we didn't have an option because that's oh, how wow. fast it moves. The stage. <laughs> so these these guys are giving it their all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Look at them. They're so good. <laughs> oh, Something. it's still going. Yeah. Still going. No. But then it, it, it hits stage for a second. Wait, 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 and it's hitting the stage now. Good. Very good. 
know. They just built it in the school hall. And that that nice. was evocative and safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's move on, because Emma Corrin brings us a brand new adaptation of Lady Chatterley's Lover. It's a limited cinema release from the 25th of November, and then it's streaming on Netflix from the 2nd of December. So I guess, uh, Emma, if, if someone's been living on a rock, they are unaware of Lady Chatterley's Lover, yeah, the, yeah. the book, the, the, the film. Who are you? And describe the story. Um, I play Constance Chatterley. And um, she gets married, and uh, it's just um, before the First World War. And um, her husband is injured in the war, and he comes back, and um, he's been crippled and is paralysed. Yeah, and so he takes her back to his... This is quite... I've realised I've started in quite a lot of detail. I'll stop you when you get to but, the end. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he takes her back to this estate in the countryside, and it's fast forwarding. And, um, yeah, and then she's on a walk one day um, in the forest and meets a gamekeeper. <laughs> and uh, they just become really platonic friends, actually. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's it, really. Uh, well, look, I'll tell you what, we've got a clip. Uh, this is you and that gamekeeper, mm -hmm. uh, Mellors, played by Jack O'Connell. And this, is, uh, this isn't your first meeting in the woods. It's, it's later on. Yeah. I've been waiting for you. Don't you think folks will become suspicious if you keep coming here? Imagine how low it you'd feel, you, with your husband's gamekeeper. You afraid? I bloody well am. I bloody well am, yeah. Not what people think of me, my lady. But if you were to ever feel sorry for what we'd been... Gamekeeper Mellors. And uh, tell me this, because, uh, you know, this has been been adapted before. What was it about uh, this version and that role that, that kind of made you think, yes, I'm going to do this? I think it was partly because when I got the script, um, Law, um, our director, was already attached, and she'd done an amazing film called The Mustang, which, if you haven't seen, you must. It's incredible. And then also, when I was reading the script, the dancing... There's this crazy scene where they both dance naked in the rain, and... For some reason, I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Was it as much fun as you thought it was going to be, Dancing in the Rain? <laughs> <laughs> it was certainly, I think, the most exhilarating thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. I think so. Yeah. Um, because I feel like in filmmaking, often it's sort of, you know, it's pretend. Profound statement. Um, <laughs> so, and it's quite rare that you're actually in a situation where you are literally thinking, feeling exactly as your character would be. And I think being completely bollico in the middle of like the Welsh countryside <laughs> with like six rain machines and just like running around, like, there was nothing you couldn't, didn't have to fake anything. You were just feeling it and it was quite amazing. Yeah. I thought the grass looked quite dry. Was it uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Hence, thanks for like the rain. I like that's what you were concentrating on. <laughs> well, no, I was just about, I'd read you saying, that, oh, this was the thing I was looking forward to, and I thought, well, that might have hurt their feet and legs running through that dry grass. You know, I can't remember. I think I well, was so Well, that's good, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm a fool. Yes. I've overthought it. I've overthought it. <laughs> uh, now, tell me, because there is naked running around the rain and, mm. and you and Mellors really connect, uh, so... <laughs> I, I mean, you're, has your mother and brother seen this? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and did, was it awkward afterwards, or do you did speak? No, we did speak, yeah. I think Mum was in tears as it ended, which I don't know how to take that. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, yeah, my two brothers had very different responses. Um, so John T. Scientist sent me, like, a sort of very succinct message, which is, like, um, Emma, really great film, here are my five favourite moments, and just listed them. <laughs> I, think one of them I think one of them was, like, really loved um, the shrubbery in the greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I think I watch a film like John T. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you notice yeah, the dry the grass? grass? <laughs> Did you notice the dry grass? <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and now, here's the thing. Actors, of course, need all sorts of skills. So, what's the story, Paul? So, you can drive? I do drive, yes. <laughs> I have a licence. Right. I do now have a licence. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yes. OK. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because you didn't, did you? I didn't. Part of the stipulation for normal people was that I had to be able to drive. And the casting director's like, you can drive. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't really a lie, because I could drive, I just wasn't legally allowed to drive. So, uh, did you I not ask for your licence? They did, and I didn't have it, so I was able to get, in time for filming, my learner's permit. So there, it was really embarrassing that I couldn't drive the car by myself, so Daisy, thankfully, had a driver's licence, so I had to be... <laughs> so, I, if Daisy wasn't in the car... You could like... drive, but you had yet to have a learner's permit. Yeah. So you could drive it's before Ireland. you started learning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you can't. Like my dad taught me to drive in West Clare, so it's okay. like it's kind of the wild west. west. Yeah. Okay. Just lots yeah. of like rookie drivers and shorts. Yeah, just kind of cruising around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but also there was a weird thing in Ireland. You're too young to remember this. That there was such a long uh, delay. The line to get in to get a, a driving yeah. test was so long that they thought we'll never clear this backlog. So if you'd had two. Uh, provisional licenses, this learner's yeah. permit. If you had two, you just got a license. No. Yeah. There's a whole generation of drivers in Ireland, and boy, do you know it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> never passed the test. Yeah. Yeah. I can drive. I look like a non driver. <laughs> I appreciate that, but I can actually drive. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Oh. Did you get your? Did you pass first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're loving his driving. Thank you. I did pass first time, only two uh, minor points, one for a comfort shunt in a bay. That's a technical term, it's when oh, you go into what? a bay and you come slightly out and you go back in, it's a comfort shunt. <laughs> I will never forget the phrase <laughs> that the man used. He said, I've had to mark you down one point for a comfort shunt. I said... <laughs> <laughs> the test is over. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I said to him. What was the second markdown? Oh, I After ran a red that, light. Nothing. I didn't know, I just heard comfort shunt and I just thought, I'm, yeah. I'm going to remember that for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah, you killed a man. And now, Richard Ioadi has written a children's book. Yes, uh, all his own. It is, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. It's here. Oh, oh, it's, called, it's called okay. The Book That No One Wanted to Read. Okay, yeah, and yeah. it's okay. out now. Yes. So, uh, it's a preemptive strike on critics. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> also, I should say that Tor Freeman, the great Tor Freeman, did the illustration, so which um, I can praise. Yeah, and they are great. Are very I mean, good. really, really good. But it's just, I was saying to you backstage, it is such a... I imagine if I was, you know, a kid, I would love this book. Well, you're very it's, kind. it's really funny. It's written from the point of view of a book. Yes, that's right. Uh, so, uh, talk us through that. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first and foremost, it was a commercial decision. <laughs> uh, well, I... I wow. was um, going to the library with my wife, Lydia, who's, who is here also. She's here. Um, thank you. <laughs> but she will not be filmed. No, um, like, she's here. The light sort of came up and then yeah. just went right back down again. <laughs> yeah. I, I can feel her going, don't. <laughs> and, um, so we were going to the library uh, and we were writing and I, I'd see all these uh, books uh, which had never been taken out or had only been taken out last time in 1930, this whole slightly fusty library. And I, I started to feel sorry for these books and I thought, you know, maybe they're feeling bad, like I'm not interesting, no one's engaging with me. So that's where the idea came from. It's not autobiographical. It's fiction. <laughs> Autobiographical fiction. No, no, no. Autobiographical I, I, fiction. I, I, it's autobiographical yes. fiction. I, I had to imagine what it was like to not be popular. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, that wasn't easy. <laughs> and it, obviously, it's a, it's a book for children. If people are watching now, yes. what sort of age range is it aimed at? Well, I should have done my research, but I don't know. I think, it, I think eight and over is fine. Or under eight. I think everyone. <laughs> if they can't read it, they'll grow into it. Yes, the point is, if you've got money, the book's for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and very quickly, Emma, Emma Garn, returning to the stage in a new production of Orlando, uh, going to be in the West End. Now, uh, this is the Virginia Woolf novel. Yeah. Is this the first time it's been adapted for the stage? I think officially, yeah. 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 Uh, so, uh, what can people expect? God, a lot of fun and a lot of sort of... I think it will really make you think... Um, sort of existentially, but in a fun way. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, explores all the big questions of who am I and who do I love, you know, the things we wake up thinking every morning. Yeah, that, that kind, kind of, of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that is at the Garrick from the 26th of November to the 25th of February, but... But, Paul Meskel, you are also about to appear in a very iconic play, A Streetcar Named Desire. It's at the Almeida from the 10th of December. I think it might be sold out already. I think so. There might be more tickets coming on the line oh. that I don't even know. Like, I might say get that, trouble for saying. Say There's going to yeah. be more tickets, <laughs> yeah. I think. Google it. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to knock through. They're going to build an yeah. extension. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You can sit in somebody's lap. Um, <laughs> so you both literally come from rehearsal rooms. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, was it a very gruelling day? A very gruelling day, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Are, are you off book yet or anything? Mm, absolutely not. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm nearly. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, better yeah, yeah. Emma's me. better, yeah. much yeah. better. Much She's better. much better. I should just leave. Everyone yeah. says yeah. so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been doing anything today, Richard? Well, it was bin day today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's nice when it goes, isn't it? It's You're the way <laughs> For that. Oh, very much yeah. so. I, I saw them take it and they did a good job. <laughs> Excellent. Well done. Well, listen, good luck Thank with uh, both of the plays. And Thank of course, you. Richard's The Book That No One Wanted to Read is out now. Okay. <laughs> it's time to meet our next guest. The 2018 Marvel hit Black Panther broke box office records and became the first superhero film to be nominated for Best Picture Oscar. Now, starring the highly anticipated sequel, Wakanda Forever, it's Winston Duke and Michaela Oh! Hello! Hi! Uh, you look fabulous! Oh, lovely to see you, Emily. Oh, nice to see you. Really nice to see you. Congratulations! Oh, 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 say hello, say hello, say hello! Hey! Okay! Thank you very much. Cool suit. Very Thank nice. Well, I'm great. coming to the uh, Graham Norton show. Oh, I tell you. Uh, welcome to both of you. <laughs> stylish. Yeah, well, you know, so fa fashion icons. We, talk, we were talking about it earlier. Yeah, yeah. 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 Drinking on set, I have to say, that's a risk. <laughs> risky. It's <laughs> a little risky. Yeah. What do you want to know? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so <laughs> Michaela, do you know everybody? Yes, it's my first time meeting Emma. Uh, have we spoken outside of, like, BAFTA... Um, no. Obviously, very memorably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but no. Okay, good. Sure. <laughs> but if you had, you would have known. There you go. Uh, because I, I would have said something been... very powerful that would have stayed with you for the rest of your life. Or just yeah. bizarre. Or oh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've just come for the premiere. How was it? Incredible. The, the crowd here is just unlike anywhere else. Wow. And, Michaela, do you have family here at the premiere? Yes, my mum is here, two mm. of my cousins are here. Um, my mum is very proud, very proud. So, listen, the film opens uh, next Friday, the 11th of November, and here's a taste of what to expect. Only the most broken people. leaders. His people did not call him General or King. They called him Kukul Khan, the Feather Serpent God, killing him will risk eternal war. He's coming. For the surface world. Oh, wow. I know. Good, right? It's everything you want. And and I'd say, I think a lot of people going into this film will be wondering, you know, what will it be like without... Chadwick Boseman, and I must say, I think the film and it handles it beautifully. It doesn't fudge it at all. It's yeah. just, it's you know, central to the. To, it's to the about plot. grief. So the yeah. movie is deeply about grief and how hard it is, and that it's it's messy. Yeah, it's not easy. There's no beautiful, pretty, perfect way through, and you're changed forever from it. Um, all the characters are, you know, mm. the entire culture of Wakanda, mm. the Wakanda that you all, you know, grow, grew to love is now changed because of this huge loss. 
But you are back. You're back as M'Baku. And you've got a bigger role this time. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm doing a lot more. A lot yeah. more noises, a lot more humor. <laughs> and I love that there's a British connection to M'Baku. He is inspired by... <laughs> The one and only Brian Blessed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's Brian Blessed and Flash Gordon. It looks exactly <laughs> like uh, Mbaku, actually. I mean, you can kind of yeah. see it. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, kind of see it. Completely. But really, so you... Like... Yeah, so I loved Brian Blessed in Flash. This is what that's from. So that's from the Flash Gordon movie. And uh, the function is really similar. The function of uh, his character, that hawk man character, is so similar where he's like... You know, he doesn't want to help. He's all about his people. He's all about doing his own thing. And then he comes in triumphantly at the end. Yeah. So I remembered that character, and I just loved how he did it. So it worked its way into how I made. And I imagine Brian Blessed was very jealous of the barking, because oh, the barking... You... you didn't do that. No, that's yours. That's mine. That's yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, that follows you around. Yeah, it's a public bathrooms everywhere. <laughs> uh, they don't... I just don't understand what they think is going to happen. Why they think, instead of maybe just saying, hey, Winston, I love your work, they just go, oh, 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 uh, you know, in, in the bathroom. Um, or, like, serving food. It's the most awkward places. Do you do it back at them, or do you just... Of course. OK. <laughs> That's why they do it. I mean, you You're to... encouraging it's it. call and response. <laughs> Who am I to not respond to the call? And, Michaela, you're new. You're a new character. Who do you play? I play Aneka, and mm. she's in the Dora Milaje. She is a rebellious, carefree, jovial spirit, mm. and um, first and foremost on her list of priorities are her sisters in the Dora Milaje, and that kind of goes above and beyond bureaucracy, the general mission of Wakanda itself. She's very focused on the individual, which... Um, means she's willing to do what um, other people maybe aren't. And you are kick-ass in this thing. I mean, Super. you let rip. Did you like all of that? Was that kind of in your wheelhouse? You know, I didn't... No, it wasn't. And I never even... I just assumed that there'd be somebody else to do all of the fighting. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big movie. You know, like, they'll be like, they've got people for that. Yeah. Um, and then it was like, no, boot camp starts. I was like, boot... Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was every day with the Dora Milaje training in the sweltering heat with sticks and spears, oh. learning fight choreography. I had never done anything like that in my life. I didn't even think I would be doing it myself. Yeah. <laughs> But, Michaela, is it true that you you have wrestled with Winston? Yes, we have wrestled. <laughs> you oh, told I, them that? No, I thought you told them that. I was like, how did this come up? I haven't told anybody okay, that. So I don't know. say, it's, it's not in the film. Oh, <laughs> It's not in the film. I don't know how you knew that. But, yes, we have wrestled a couple of times. Yeah. OK. Yeah. yeah. And is that where the finger thing comes from? No. You set these up really... <laughs> that's, that's a really interesting setup. <laughs> no, no. The finger thing We're was just... Yeah. <laughs> the finger thing Lean was just forward. something that I would just, like, do on oh. set, just to, like, oh. bring the vibe sometimes, and I know. And then I would just... Oh, a little bit. It's just what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. We've been tested. We'd have to... No, finish. but, yeah. Um, and then, no, we would. We would sometimes wrestle. Obviously, it's a bit of a mismatch. <laughs> so... The she last... lost when I sat on her. <laughs> oh. And then at one point, you, like, sort of used me as, like, a hoover. <laughs> it was like, like, that was just, like, hoovering around. Yeah, yeah no, it was fun. Yeah, was... We're, we're close. Yes, very. We're very close. Yes. Because, Emma Garner, are you listening to this? Are you jealous? Because you want to be in a big stunt thing. I want to be a hoover. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Desperately. <laughs> but uh, have you got to do stunts yet? No. Like, no. no. <laughs> I guess dancing in the rain, but that's not really a stunt. The dancing just... in the rain looked very dangerous. Don't forget that dry grass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and here's a weird thing. Paul, I'd never heard of this before, but when you went to drama school in Dublin, Paul... Yes. And they made you promise not to play contact sports. Yeah, the, throughout, oh. like, yeah. So first, first and second year, I was like, I'm... I'm going to continue playing Gaelic football. So oh, I made a decision just before third year started. I was like, I'm going to be doing loads of plays. I'm going to take it all. Like, I had taken it all very seriously, but I was like, this is serious. Saturday before we started on the Monday, I was, I was like, this is my last game of Gaelic football. And I broke my jaw. <gasps> yeah. yeah. I was reaching for a ball in this 
guy hit me in the face and mm. snapped it in half. And then the physio came up to me and he's like, looking at my jaw, and I was like, I think it's broken. And he goes, just bite down on your gum shield. And this pain went up the side <laughs> of my head. But then I went in on Monday and I was like, well, they told me not to play any contact sports. So I said that I had gotten mugged at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. It was the only way. I, but I, was I spent the first four weeks of rehearsals being like, rehearsing like this. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a drama school. Yeah, drama school. Yeah, we couldn't yeah. Work, even work out in my school. Yeah, yeah. they didn't want us to Just yoga, yeah, it was yeah, only ridiculous. yoga. That was it. Yeah. Really? They didn't want any so injury? Did. Yeah, they told us we I couldn't lift. Same no in my school. <laughs> <laughs> they had to take the weights away from me. <laughs> I'm very interested here. And uh, Michaela, the last time we spoke, I May Destroy You, it hadn't come out yet. It was just the potential. And then I love watching that roll across the world, that global success. It won the Emmy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And was it after the Emmy you, you discovered a, a fan, a famous fan? Yeah, a few. I discovered a bouquet of flowers from Beyonce. Oh, my God. God. Which is just unheard of. That's I don't amazing. even know how she got my address. It's quite... <laughs> She's Beyonce. She's Beyonce, yeah. and yeah. therefore it that. made sense. Do and don't I do said that. thank don't you, do that. just in case you could hear me. I was like... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, make that. Are you guys in town for... Are you, you here for a long time? Winston? No, we're just in and out, you know, oh. for, for the premiere. Well, listen, thank you so much for hot-footing it over here Absolutely. from Leicester Square. Lovely to see you. Yes. Wakanda Forever is out in cinemas next Friday. Michaela Gollum, Winston Duke, everybody! <laughs> Woo! OK. It is time for music. This Mercury Prize-nominated rapper is back with his third album, Hugo, here performing the current single, Nobody Knows, Lattice Road. It is Loyal Corner! <laughs> I reached the black man, he didn't understand I told the white man he wouldn't take my hand I sat alone in the shadows of a man with his eyes closed And told myself I should have ran I'm the boss, son, and I'm supposed to hide a plan But can't think till I figure who I am Are you lost, son, or are you just another man Sitting in my sunshine, trying to catch a tan check Listen, outside, I can feel the sun's rain I love it, inside, I was bumping John Wayne I made peace, you could never say the wrong name ADHD, my life, one long game But don't fudge your arms, say reveal nothing Guys I used to run with were steady, still puffing But what did they expect? Yo, what did they expect? And yo, I never used to think it your fit When my dad passed, straight by Logical neglect, the other one, sunset sitting on the steps. I was left, my mother came heavy in her breath. There was tears on my face, transferring to her chest. I was left, and she would say, He ain't coming. Uh, but I can tell him that you love him. And I would shout, Nah, love means nothing. Say, I want a hug, I want to talk, I want something. See, reach the black man, he didn't understand. I told the white man he wouldn't take my hand on. I, I sat alone in the shadows of a man with these eyes closed and told myself I should have ran. I'm the boss, son, and I'm supposed to hide a plan. But can't think till I figure who I am. Are you lust or are you just another man sitting in my sunshine? Uh, my eyes wide, tears cried, the news lied, but he died. So who am I? Hey, yo, I'm asking, who am I? Because my kid will maybe have them blue eyes And he won't understand the pain that's in mine And late at night I wonder maybe that's why Because I never want to hear the same cry from a kid who doesn't fit in uh, To the world that he live in, yeah Half cast, just kidding, wear a mask, just kidding, move ass, just whip him There's no sitting here, there's no living And yo, you can't hate the roots of the tree And not hate the tree So how can I hate my father? Without hating me, uh, I told the black man he didn't understand. 
I reached the white man, he wouldn't take my hand I sat alone in the shadows of a man with these eyes closed And told myself I should have ran I'm the boss and I'm supposed to hide a plan But can't think till I figure who I am Are you lost or are you just another man Sitting in my sunshine, uh, trying to catch a tan Glory Sitting in my sunshine, sitting in my sunshine Yeah, I'm big fans of everyone. Pretty oh, very good. And, and, and so, some people are big fans of you. Yeah. Yeah, Paul I'm Mescal, yeah. big fan. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, and really... actually, you are a big fan of Black Panther, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. what, what did you call your car? Uh, Wakanda. Yeah. <laughs> Is that still your car? Yeah, no, it was just my first car. It was, you know, small and black, like a Black Panther, so... Like, okay. It was weird to just call it Black Panther, so... OK. I just pushed it a little bit. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and now, we're talking about uh, car names. The album is called Hugo, yeah. and that is a car name connection. Yeah, my dad. Um, my dad taught me to drive over the lockdown, um, and we weren't very close growing up, and it was quite a beautiful thing. We, it was just driving, you know, which all of you probably have done. You know, when you're in a car, you're not looking at each other, so there's no confrontation. So we were able to have, you know, quite heavy conversations, but you didn't have to see any of those heavy lines, like, land on the other person, so... It was a safe space for growth and, you know? You say that, I just think the chances of killing your father if he's <laughs> teaching you how to drive yeah. are quite high. No, I came close, I came Yeah, close. no, yeah. And also of having what? a comfort shunt. <laughs> <laughs> What's a comfort shunt? I wanna... Well, oh. please. <laughs> Don't, tell me that, tell me that. Yeah. <laughs> your, your dad wouldn't like it. <laughs> it wouldn't, it wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, now, this album, is, presumably you're going out on tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next year. And is this... I think it's sold out already, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm playing at Wembley. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so great. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, yeah. the... Can I say there are still copies of my book available? <laughs> <laughs> it is we'll not sold out. If it does, we'll print more. <laughs> OK. We're okay. selling them at the show as well. We're of course, them. yeah. Yeah, lovely. Uh, so, here's the thing. The last tour sold out as well, right, Loyal? Yeah. 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 But you gave people the opportunity to get tickets. How could they get tickets um, for a sold-out show? It started with a kid tried to swap me a, like a football shirt, a Sweden football shirt, and then I was like to people, if you've got football shirts, vintage ones, I'll swap you tickets. But then a lot of the kids were like, I'm not into football, but I want to come to your show. So I said as a joke, like, oh, if you get a tattoo of me, you can come. No. But then a lot of kids... <laughs> got tattoos. <laughs> We've got that. This one, you know this is an actual tattoo. What, what's that a tattoo of? Obviously that, you. That is me on flames drinking a Guinness. Nice. OK. <laughs> is that a reference to...? It's just there was a photo of me drinking a Guinness, okay. but I wasn't on flames. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the original. Yeah. The tattoo artist just, oh, I know, I'll improv here. Yeah. <laughs> so this tour, what are people going to do to get uh, free tickets this time? Yeah, I actually don't. I would love some suggestions from anyone. Actually, because I'm kind of at a loss now. Get a tattoo of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, if they meet what I did back in the day when I was, like, doing theatre, mm -hmm. I would say, meet me in Tinseltown and I'll buy you a milkshake if you buy a ticket. OK, that's nice. But I think that was, for, that. That was for a show that wasn't selling out. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that, right? <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> and that was also not a yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that no. was nice. No, I'd, I'd go with money myself. I'd uh, go the full Adele, uh, yeah. 40 grand, you can have a ticket. Yeah, yeah. do it, do it. She does that. No, no, she does okay. it. <laughs> yeah, right here. I promise you, she does it. Hey, listen, that was a great performance. Thank you so much. Oh, Good luck with the me. tour. Good luck with the album. Loyal Carter, everybody! No time for red chairs tonight, so it just remains for me to ask you to thank my guest, Richard Ayoade, <laughs> Emma Corrin, <laughs> Paul Meskel, <laughs> Michaela Gold, <laughs> and Mr. Winston Duke. <laughs> Join me next week with music.
Steve from the great Florence and the Machine, BAFTA-winning comedian Mo Gilligan from Motherhood and Line of Duty, Anna Maxwell-Martin, Queen's Gambit star Anna Taylor-Joy, and the boss himself, Bruce Springsteen. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Lover Michaela's here, a great guest, and of course, a star of award winning series I May Destroy You. Press red to watch that on iPlayer. Graham and Boy George want more, more, more. Nothing is too much on RuPaul's Drag Race UK next on BBC One.